we have the final issue of Nintendo Power's ninth year and the results of the Nintendo Power Awards. And after the last issue picked things up so much, we had a low issue with only one game. A good one, but only one. So, our cover game this issue is Doom 64, setting the tone for most of this issue, covering games that we've generally already reviewed. In the letters column, we get letters about what people want to see in the upcoming issue 100 with a side bit objecting to Nintendo Power, ragging on the PC version of Doom in their Doom 64 review, something that the editorial response kind of doubles down on. In the power charts, once again, we have no new titles in the chart, but considering the main releases on the list for the N64 are the launch lineup, and the Game Boy is mainly getting re-releases at the moment, that's kind of to be expected. The issue starts out with FIFA Soccer 64, which I previously reviewed. The issue has some notes on the game's presentation and four-player support, along with some general soccer strategies and a history of soccer games on Nintendo consoles, which is a nice touch. Next up is Blast Core, again, a game I previously reviewed with notes on the later levels of the game with maps and that sort of thing. Nice to see this expanded coverage, but it does also feel a bit like we are running into the limitations of what N64 games are out right now. We have preview coverage for Star Fox 64, but not really feature coverage, no real level information. It's mainly summaries describing the Game Scrumble Pack support, along with the new vehicle, the Landmaster Tank, which was somewhat due to appear in Star Fox 2 on the SNES, but it's getting its first actual outing here. We are also introduced to Star Fox's rivals, Star Wolf, which, again, would have been introduced in Star Fox 2 had that game been released. That said, the game was not out, and not close to being out, so we're not really in a good position to review the game yet. We have continuing coverage of Doom 64 with maps and notes for levels 11 through 18, which finishes the first half of the game and takes us into the gates of hell. Back on the SNES, we have Donkey Kong Country 3 with notes on finding the 15 banana birds in the game. In Epic Center News, we have screenshots for Met Legend of the Mystical Ninja for the N64 and for Earthbound 64. One of these games, co games comes out, the other one, not so much. Our featured epic title is an import title that never gets a US release, at least not officially. Wonder Project J2. The level of coverage here and how in-depth it gets actually makes it more of a bummer that this game never got a US release since we have such a slow opening release window right now that honestly, I think the game could have sold well just because we were there's so few games that are out at this point. There's more titles coming out, certainly, uh, in the future, like GoldenEye. But having this title out as something that's so very different, particularly compared to the creative chances that are being taken at this point on the PlayStation, would have been a interesting shift. In Epic Strategy, we have more tips for Harvest Moon, this time on optimizing your cash flow. In the classified information column, we have some cheats for Turok Dinosaur Hunter. Now, finally, we have a new game and the only one that I'll be reviewing this issue, The Lost Vikings 2 for the Super Nintendo. We have maps of several stages in the game and also some notes on new characters who you'll be using and those characters' new moves. The Lost Vikings 2 feels very much like a logical and organic extension of the gameplay of the first game. Eric is still the scout character, Balog is still the combat character, and Olaf is still set to block the projectiles, but all their secondary verbs are tweaked somewhat. Eric doesn't have the bow anymore and has replaced it with a double jump, a headbutt that can destroy blocks, and swimming, making him a stronger character when it comes to navigation. Balog's sword swing is a little weaker, but he makes up for it with an extending bionic arm that he can swing on and also make ranged attacks with and also hit buttons or collect items, allowing him to activate switches from behind a shield, like with um, the first game. Olaf's is probably the less distinct from his core concept. 
the shield allows him to glide when falling, um, giving him some little ability to maneuver on his way down, along with combined with a fart to extend his glide and destroy blocks on the floor. Oh, um, because, because because he's fat. It's a fat joke. And an ability to shrink to go through smaller areas. There are some guest characters who will join the party throughout the game. Various points where our uh, three Vikings get split up and who all each have their own abilities, but you're always going to be going back to those three or three, and the levels are generally designed to take really good advantage of them and their abilities. It's really what you want in a sequel. Something that builds off the original work without being dependent on having played the original work in order to succeed in the character's abilities. Something that, for example, follow-ups the Lemmings were somewhat dependent on by tossing you in the deep end. Uh, same thing for Load Runner follow-ups. This one nails that balance really well. In Counselor's Corner, we have some more tips for Donkey Kong Country 3 and for Mario 64. And finally, we have the Nintendo Power Awards. The votes have been tallied and we have determined our winners. And they're not too surprising. Mario 64 wins the awards for best graphics, ending, innovation, play control, coolest move for the black backflip, coolest item for the metal cap, which admittedly, it does look pretty cool. Best hero for Mario, most annoying character for the crying baby penguin and best N64 game. Shadows of the Empire wins best story, challenge, soundtrack, play variety, vehicle for the swoop bike, not the snow speeder oddly enough, and the awards for easy to learn, tough to master, best villain for Boba Fett, and best baddie for the Wampas. Waveway 64 wins best sports game and best multiplayer game. Killer Instinct Gold wins best fighting game and best cheat code. Pilot Wing 64 wins the That's Gotta Hurt award for the canon. And the only Super Nintendo RPG to take home honors was Super Mario RPG for Funniest Game and Best Super Nintendo Game. And finally, Donkey Kong Land 2 took home Best Game Boy Game. In the story of this past year of Nintendo Power Magazine, uh, the now playing column, No Also Rans. Um, everything stuff we previously reviewed and reprints. And in Pack Watch, some of the upcoming titles include Robotron 64, which would be interesting, along with Aero Fighters Assault, Imagineers Multi Racing Championship, and we have the announcement of Castlevania 64. Well, we had one game this issue. The question becomes not which game should you pick up, but rather, is this game worth picking up? And the answer is yes ish. Copy of the Lost Vikings due for, due for the Super Nintendo is going to cost you about $100 for a loose copy or one with a case. Now, get a legit copy of the game as part of the Blizzard Arcade collection, which has Lost Vikings too. But if you are have reservations on giving money to Blizzard right now, as of the recording, the merger has not been finalized. And very toxic management of Activision Blizzard is still present. There have been staff of Activision Blizzard and the employees who are attempting to unionize have not called for a boycott as of recording, but nonetheless, um, if you are electing not to give Blizzard your money, then that's an issue there. So that's entirely up to you. Now, game also got released on PC and a bunch of other platforms. Those versions might be more affordable, um, but that's kind of where we're at for Lost Vikings. So having wrapped up um, year nine of Nintendo Power, for best of the rest, we had a lot of issues this year where it's basically like a whole lot of reprints and then us covering whatever new titles came out. So I'm going to do a little different next time. Next time for our appendix. Um, I'm going to look at what else was going on in the video game industry during Nintendo Power's year.
Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. And also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any f future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks, also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.